Hi, my name is Lewis Carroll. Man, this is going to be an unpopular video right here, but I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, tell you something about creatine monohydrate that I don't particularly like. And uh, there's a lot of bodybuilders that love it. This creatine monohydrate is so popular because all the bodybuilders feel that they're gaining a little more stamina in the gym. They think they might be getting a few gains in muscle, just a little bit. So, and there's so many, um, the people that make creatine is, are pushing it. And bodybuilder forums all over the place are pushing it and websites are pushing it and everybody seems to think it's just great. I don't think it's that great. And I'll tell you why. Sure, it'll give you a little of energy. It'll, it'll give you a little bit of energy and it will uh, increase your stamina in the gym a little bit. But then again, so will beta alanine and actually I think beta alanine works better. Um, creatine monohydrate is a myostatin inhibitor. And uh, myostatin is a protein that's produced in the muscle that actually inhibits or puts the brakes on protein synthesis, muscle synthesis. Keeps your muscles from growing too big too fast. And you've got to ask yourself, well, why would the body want something like that? Well, there's a good reason. Because your muscles are never supposed to get stronger than your tendons, ever. If your muscles are so strong that they can just tear your tendons from your bones or you end up having connective tissue problems, you're going to have, these are bad injuries. These are bad injuries and tendons take forever to heal. They take a long time. Um, it's, it's a proven thing that myostatin receptors are very plentiful in connective tissue. And I'm talking about tendons, joints, discs in your back, that type of thing. This is where you're going to find them. What are they doing? They keep your tendons strong. But they do, it, they do two things. They keep your tendons strong and they also keep your muscles weaker than your tendons. So is this good? Yeah, it's real good. That's exactly the way nature intended it and it's the way it ought to stay. That's just my opinion. I see bodybuilders out there that injure themselves in the gym and they never seem to make that connection. There's bodybuilders out there that, uh, you know, they'll, they'll blow a disc in their back or they'll end up with tendon issues or they'll, you know, you might be doing dips and you'll pull something in a, in a, in a shoulder area right here. You know, there's tendons that hold your whole shoulder joint together. You might mess up a disc in your back doing squats. Um, you might not be able to do uh, leg work because maybe your knees are bothering you. And if you really think about it, you think, think about it and, and figure out what the connection is. Are you also taking creatine? Have you been taking creatine for six months or a year or two years? Are you taking five grams a day? Do you think there's a connection there? I think there is. I think there is. I'm probably the only person that thinks that, but I think there is. I don't think it's a safe thing to inhibit myostatin. Myostatin curves the muscle growth, sure, but it also keeps your tendons strong. There's been studies at the University of Michigan, there's been other studies. Uh, this, you know, it's, it's not like the information isn't there. If you look at it, you'll find out that in, in my studies especially, uh, they noticed that tendon strength was a good 40% weaker when uh, myostatin was not present. When the gene expression wasn't happening, these, these mice have bigger muscles and weaker tendons. That's not a, a condition to be in. You don't want to go to the gym. I mean, you go to the gym, the main reason you want to go there is to uh, increase hormones and stay healthy. But, uh, you know, putting yourself in a situation where your tendons get weaker or your connective tissue actually gets weaker while your muscles get stronger is not a safe condition to be in. So I'm personally against uh, creatine. I don't think it's something that people should be taking. I know a lot of people want to take it, but according to the research that has been done, and from what I've read, it's probably not a good thing to do. And beyond that, I have some personal experience with it. I'm 55 years old. I'm, I'm in very good condition right now, uh, thanks to the time machine. But I can tell you this, back in my early 40s, when I blew a couple of discs, I actually I blew one, I blew one disc, and, um, and shortly after that, I began to... I have some knee issues, some knee problems. I had knee pain. And I had never felt that before. My knees had always been completely pain free. I thought they could just take whatever kind of abuse I could dish out because they never hurt. And all of a sudden they started hurting. And wouldn't you know it, I had been on creatine monohydrate for about six months. Well, I stopped it. But the problem is when I stopped it, the condition didn't reverse. I went another eight or nine years with bad knees. I had to get a surgery for my back. And um, it didn't reverse. I didn't get any better. As a matter of fact, I was still getting a little bit worse until I went on the time machine. And the time machine flipped everything around. I got my knees back. 
but was creatine to blame for that? I think there's a link there. I think there's a good chance that it was to blame. If you think about your own workouts and think about your own inju injuries, and if you, if you are on creatine, you might take a look at that link. You know, ask yourself, when did you start creatine? How much of it are you taking? And when did you start experiencing tendon issues? And did you ever have tendon issues before you were taking creatine? These are good questions to ask yourself. Personally, I've asked those questions, and I'm against creatine. That's, that's my thought on creatine.